Hey Cloud Scholars, hope you're doing well. Today we're talking about some of the top security threats you are more than likely to see in 2023. These are in no particular order. It's just a list that we've come up with that we think will be the biggest threats to companies in the coming year. This year has only just started and there's already been some major breaches. Coming in at number one, we have malware. If you've been in IT for some time, you know malware is nothing new. Malware is pretty much malicious software. It can be in the form of a virus, a worm, ransomware, and or spyware. These softwares are injected into networks and systems unknowingly to the end user and company with the intention of causing disruptions to computers, servers, client devices, and networks. Malware is dangerous and can be detrimental to a company. Malware can leak private information and gain unauthorized access to information or systems. It can deprive a business access to its own information. The worst part is that it can do all this unknowingly to the user's computer security and privacy. Without a good antivirus software, malware can live on your system and just give out your information. The best way to protect yourself from malware is keeping your antivirus software and firewalls up to date with the latest patches and security fixes. Some companies even have a two-tier firewall system. This means that they'll have two firewalls from two different vendors. The purpose of this is to minimize vulnerability. One one vendor's vulnerability is less likely to be the same as another. Number two is ransomware. Ransomware is a type of malware, but with a specific focus. A ransomware attack will either block access to a system or threaten to publish proprietary and important information. Usually in a ransomware attack, the attacker will demand something from the company or person. Normally it will be some amount of cash, but this isn't limited to that. The worst part is that companies tend to pay this ransom to solve the matter quickly only to get attacked again by the same attacker. Number three is distributed denial service, otherwise known as a DDoS attack. The most common type is a ransom DDoS attack or RDDoS. Unlike a ransomware attack, a DDoS attack does not encrypt a company's system. The primary objective of a DDoS attack is to disrupt the normal function of a network, server, or website, causing some type of inconvenience or financial loss to the target and its user. Normally, these attacks are geared towards high profile targets. This attack is very common in the gaming world. Since the attacker only needs to flood the server with requests to overload the services running on it, there are various methods to defend yourself against a DDoS attack. This includes over provisioning of your network and server resources. Over provisioning can help to ensure that the target system can handle the increased traffic during an attack. Another way is filtering incoming traffic to block malicious requests and only allow legitimate traffic. You can also use a traffic management system to distribute the incoming traffic across multiple servers, thus, reducing reducing the load on any one system. This kind of goes hand in hand with provisioning. One example would be like using a load balancer. Another way is implementing rate limiting control to control the rate of incoming traffic. This will help prevent overwhelming amounts of requests. While a DDoS attack sounds simple, it's important to understand that DDoS attacks can be highly sophisticated and is constantly evolving. As such, it's crucial to regularly review and update the defenses in place to protect against them. At number four, we have phishing. Phishing is one of the oldest methods of cybersecurity threats. Phishing is where an attacker deceives or trick a person into revealing sensitive information. The most common is either via email, fake websites, or ad links. Normally, the email will include some link that will redirect the user to a fake website or download. Once the virus is installed into the system, the attacker then has access to your system. Most people get caught by clicking on like the first link that comes up when they search something using Google or some type of search engine. The link that's on the very top of the page when you search something that normally says add next to it, yeah, you probably don't want to click on that. Attackers will take the time to completely mirror a website to the point where you think that you're entering your credentials into a legitimate online form. It's good for a company to kind of have like annual training for employees that educate them. Some companies go as far as sending out their own fake emails to see how many employees click on the links inside or respond with their requested information. Normally, the employee that clicks gets rewarded with having to go to a security and data breach training. At number five, we have IoT. IoT stands for Internet of Things. It refers to the interconnected network of physical devices, vehicles, home appliances, and other items embedded with electronics, software, sensors, and connectivity, which enables these objects to connect and exchange data. The rapid growth of the Internet of Things has led to an increased number of connected devices. This, in turn, has led to a number of security risks. 
Some of the most significant IoT security risks include insecure device management. Many IoT devices have weak passwords or other vulnerabilities that can easily be exploited by attackers, making it easy for them to gain unauthorized access to these devices. Data privacy. IoT devices collect and transmit a large amount of personal and sensitive information, which can be intercepted by hackers if proper security measures are not in place, which makes data privacy a major security risk. IoT devices often connect to unsecured networks, making it easy for attackers to intercept sensitive information or launch attacks. It's important for individuals and organizations to take steps to secure their IoT devices and networks, including using strong passwords, securing their networks, and regularly updating software to address known vulnerabilities. At number six, we have data poisoning. Data poisoning refers to the intentional corruption or manipulation of a data set in order to produce inaccurate or misleading results. This type of attack is a form of adversarial machine learning and can have serious consequences in various fields such as finance, healthcare, and security. In data poisoning attacks, the attacker injects malicious or corrupted data into the training set of the machine learning algorithm with the goal of changing the behavior of the model. The biggest issue with data poisoning is that the attacker will start by manipulating the data in a way that is not easily noticeable. They will make small, gradual changes that are difficult to detect. Once the model has been trained on the poisoned data, it will make incorrect predictions or take incorrect actions. This will lead to significant harm or damage. For example, in a healthcare setting, data poisoning could result in incorrect diagnosis or treatment recommendations, while in a financial setting, it could result in fraudulent transactions or incorrect investment decisions. To defend against data poison attacks, it's important to have a robust and secure process for collecting, storing, and processing data. Additionally, machine learning algorithms can be designed to detect and reject data that deviates from expected patterns, and regular audits and assessments of the data and the model behavior can help identify potential data poison attacks. Number seven are your own employees. Internal employees can pose a significant security risk to a company's network, particularly if they're not properly trained on security best protocols and practices. Some of the most common internal employee security risks are many of which I've already mentioned, social engineering, phishing, malware, and sites with malicious intent, and weak passwords. Employees may be targeted by attackers using techniques to gain access to sensitive information or systems. It is important for organizations to provide regular security training and awareness program for their employees, to implement strict security policies and procedures, and to implement technical measures such as multi-factor authentication to mitigate these risks. Additionally, organizations should continuously monitor their networks for signs of suspicious activities and respond quickly to any potential potential security incidents. At number eight, we have cloud security. Cloud computing is becoming a popular option for many organizations, offering cost savings, scalability, and flexibility. However, the move to the cloud also introduced new security risks. Some of the most significant cloud security weakness include data breaches. Attackers may be able to access sensitive information stored in the cloud if proper security measures are not in place, resulting in a data breach. Insufficient access control. If access controls are not properly implemented, unauthorized users may be able to access sensitive information stored in the cloud. Malicious insiders, employees or contractors with access to cloud systems and data may abuse their privileges for personal gain to damage the company or to provide information to a competitor. Configuration errors. Misconfigured cloud systems can leave sensitive information exposed and vulnerable to attack. Lack of visibility and control. Organizations may be limited to visibility and control over their data in the cloud, making it more difficult to detect and respond to security incidents. Dependence on cloud service providers. Organizations are dependent on their cloud service providers to properly secure their data and systems, which can result in a loss of control over security if the provider experiences a security breach or fails to properly implement security measures. It is important for organizations to carefully evaluate the security capabilities of their cloud service provider and to implement strong security measures and best practices to mitigate these risks. This may include using encryption to protect sensitive data, implementing multi-factor authentication, and regularly monitoring and testing security controls. Lastly, we have new technology. New technologies often come with new weaknesses that can be exploited by attackers. Some of the most significant weaknesses associated with new technologies include lack of security testing. New technologies are often released without proper security testing, 
leading to vulnerabilities that can be easily exploited by attackers. Complexity. New technologies are often complex and difficult to understand, making it easier for attackers to find and exploit vulnerabilities. Integration with legacy systems. Integrating new technology with legacy systems can create new attack vectors for attackers to exploit. Dependence on software. New technologies often rely heavily on software, which can be vulnerable to attack if proper security measures are not in place. Inadequate security measures. Let's face it, new technologies may sometimes lack built-in security measures, making it more difficult for organizations to protect themselves from attacks. The rapid pace of innovation. The rapid pace of innovation in new technologies make it difficult for security measures to keep up, leading to a lag in the implementation of security measures. It is important for individuals and organizations to stay informed about the latest weaknesses associated with new technologies and to take steps to mitigate these risks through proper planning, implementation, and management of security measures. This may include regular security testing and audits, implementing strong security policies, and keeping software and systems up to date with the latest security patches. That wraps up our list of the top security threats you'll probably see in 2023. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the link below. Thanks for watching.